Hey everybody, today Rotto runs down the Penny Papers Adventures, which is a series of roll and write games where 1 to 100 players can help young Penny Papers and Dakota Smith explore all kinds of dangerous locations. Now, there's three games in the series right now. They all play exactly the same, but they have different levels of complexity. This one, the Temple of Apikabu, is for ages 7 up, Skull Island is for 8 and up, and Valley of the Wiracocha is for ages 9 and up, because it's the most complex. So I'm going to show you how this one works. Well, like I said, they all use the same basic gameplay. And how does it work? Well, uh, everybody gets a piece of paper. They're all two-sided. They generally have a normal and a slightly more advanced side you can play on. You hand these out to everybody. Everybody needs a pencil. The game does not come with pencils, but it does come with three dice. So let's say... Uh, uh, we are set up, ready to go here. I am ready to explore. Jen is ready to explore. And every round, we roll the three dice. And each of these dice is special. They have numbered one, two, five, and then a special symbol on it. Now, in this roll, no special symbols came out. So we can start writing numbers on these grids, which represents exploring this Lost Valley. And you've got three choices when there's three numbers. I could write a three, a four, and a five, or I could write a seven and a five, or a nine and a three, or a uh, nine, 10, 11, 12, or a 12. So uh, the first time you write a number, you have to come in from the outer edge as you explore. And every time you write a number, you have to write it adjacent to a number you've already done. So I'm just going to go simple. I'll start from over here and I'll just, hey, I'll, let's go really simple. I'll write a three, a four, and a five. Now, everybody's doing this at the same time. Jen might have gone a different way. She, for example, might write a five. Uh, down here, and then she might add these two together to get an eight, and she'll go diagonally over there. So that was the first round. We roll again. And ooh, this time we got a snake. Now, every one of these games has a bad result. The snake, or the skull, or the mummy. And whenever the bad result comes up, you don't get to draw numbers like you normally want to, which is the main thing we're trying to do. We are trying to create sets of numbers to score points. When a snake comes up, everybody hands their map off into the center of the board, and then everybody takes one randomly, and that's not their own, and they end up riding a snake somewhere on the map, trying to do as much damage to their opponents as possible. So I, on Jen's space, I'll write a snake. Oh, what the heck? I'll put it right here. Uh, so I'm hoping that that kind of uh, impedes her plans for this five and this eight. And Jen, meanwhile, she'll put a snake out here so it has the potential to mess me up in all of these spaces. And that was that round. Now we roll again. And hey, this time, Dakota Smith showed up. So um, when the snake doesn't show up, we can write numbers. So we can write a three and a seven, or a three and a four, or a seven. They each of us have the choice how to do that. Plus, we can have Dakota Smith do something. Jen, she'll take the two of them together and make that a seven and put it over here next to her eight. Me, I will put this three over here next to my other three. And I'll put this four over here next to... Mm. Ah. Yeah, okay, next to this four, let's say. And, all right, so we both use the numbers. We can both write, if we want to, Dakota Smith's symbols. It could be a villager, a mining camp, or a jungle exploration camp. I will go on ahead, and you can only do it once. I'll put a villager right here. That's how I use Dakota Smith. Now, the thing is, at the end of the game, this villager wants to be surrounded by as many villages as possible. So I'm going to start trying to make more and more villages in this area so this villager will be happy. And I'm on my way to doing that. I'll explain how that works in a second. Jen, meanwhile, she is going to have Dakota here put a mining zone. And she'll extend it right here, a little mining camp. All right. Because the mining camp want to be next to mountains, which is what Jen's trying to build right here, a mountain range. So how this works, we keep on rolling like this, round after round after round, filling more spaces up, either putting one of the three special cases for Dakota or um, attacking each other with snakes, or occasionally Penny will show up. When Penny shows up, it's a wild card. She can be any number, 1 to 15, wherever you like. So that's actually really cool too. This is what we're trying to do. We are trying to create sets of certain numbers in combinations to score points. 
four of a kind right next to each and adjacent to each other is a village worth six. So you can see I've started to put a four and a four here. Later on, I'll probably want to put a four and a four here because then those four fours will be a village and they'll be completely surrounding this little villager. So he'll be giving me bonus points. And later on, if I get a three and a three here, then this is a village, this is a village, the villager's totally surrounded and I've scored a lot of points off of that. Meanwhile, a mountain range is three six or graders next to each other. So Jen has put an eight and a seven. And if she puts a six or greater here, then she'll have a mountain range. As you might imagine, mines want to be next to mountain ranges. So that's pretty cool. Jungles are a set of five that are all unique values. So that's another thing you can go for as well. And then jungles want to be next to these camps to score bonus points. So those are the positives you can do. Plus also, you get seven points if you filled up every single space before the game is over. Now, on the other hand, if you've got snakes, and we both have a snake, I've just written this little ampersand here, they lose you points equal to the biggest value. This snake is going to lose Jen eight points because she put an eight right there. My snake is going to lose me four points because there's a four, no, I'm sorry, five, because it's next to this five, diagonals count as adjacent. But if I ever put, say, a seven over here, then the snake would lose me seven points. However, on a future round, if you ever happen to, oh, let's say, came out like this. Hey, Penny can be anything, and this could be a five and a four or a nine. You, whenever you use a nine, you can use a nine to take out an enemy. And then you're not going to lose points off it. You've wasted a valuable nine that could be a mountain range or something like that. But hey, you got rid of a snake that was going to lose you points. And we keep going like that till the game is over. And the end game might look something like this. You can see I ended up scoring uh, 72 points here. There's a village and there's a village. There's a village with a villager surrounded by all of them. He's very happy. I had another village over here, another village over here. I have a camp and there's two forests next to it because they're all unique numbers. You can see I started trying to build a mountain range here, but I ran out of time. I didn't get it done. And I was trying to go for another forest over here. And this snake lost me one point because it was surrounded by ones. This snake lost me three points because it was surrounded by threes. And that, folks, is basically what Penny Papers is all about. And I gotta say, this is a fun, fast-playing, roll-and-write game. Uh, the Certainly, the more complex versions of them you play, the more interesting the decision-making is. The earlier versions, you still do the same stuff. You roll, you write numbers, or Penny, which is anything, or a bad thing, or Dakota. But you're going for simpler stuff, like straights, or uh, you know, there's just not as much to consider. So imagine these just being simpler versions of this. And Jen and I really enjoy it quite a bit. And it's a fun solo game, too. This was a solo game I played, where you keep track of progress over here. Now, I do have one very strong complaint about the entire Penny Papers adventure series, and that is these attacks. The fact that every time these come out, uh, and there's a one in six chance every round that it'll happen. Everybody takes everybody else's piece of paper and does their best to destroy their plans, blocking off what they're trying to do, hurting them, just straight out attack them. It will happen usually several times over the course of a game. And it's just, for Jen and me, Care Bear players, no fun at all. Every time the snake rolls, and you know, and the other thing, when a snake rolls, even if the other dice were really cool, you don't get to use them. So it's always an incredibly frustrating round when these snakes come up because, hey, now I've got to go and attack somebody and really mess up their plans, and I didn't even get to do anything good. I hate this system in what is otherwise an incredibly fun, charming, fast game um, that's really good for all ages, depending on which version you get. So for me and Jen, it's not really a keeper. I wish this snake system worked in a different way where it wasn't all about attacking each other, because uh, to me, that's out of place. But otherwise, and, and, you know, certainly if you enjoy having games with a little bit of take that, a little bit of cutthroat, a little bit of, oh, I see, you're, a, you're about to get this really high scoring pyramid, which is the toughest thing in the game to get. Oh, I'll just put a snake there and ruin it. And now you can never have that. If you enjoy that kind of thing, you might want to check out Penny Papers Adventures. And that's it, folks. That is the rundown. Thanks very much for watching. Have a very, very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye.